This is their hope, this is their foundation, this is their greatest hour. It is their worst hour, but it is their greatest hour to be a witness and a testimony 
to the others in their country and got it. All in it. Yeah, all the Crazy. We're having a great time. Look at all that. <laughs> they just shoot them out. <laughs> I watched that. <laughs> You're going to. <laughs> so actually, we have um, a very special event coming up. So it is actually our middle school and high school empowered youth kickoff this Tuesday. Woo! A festival. So we are saying you need some dirty clothes. Alright, there are some activities that we do not want you looking fancy for. <laughs> Let's just to say the least. Yeah, no new new school clothes. We don't need that. We need like your painting clothes, pretty much. We can paint it. And that will be this Tuesday at 6 to 8. And a great treat is so this is why I'm asking is everyone to invite a middle school and high schooler. There's a lot of things. Is that you know, some people might find me very funny, blah, 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 or Danya, but in the ending of it all, what team wins the whole festival gets to grab spaghetti and meatballs and put it on the youth pastor they're choosing. So it is a great thing to encourage people to be like, hey, come and let spaghetti. No, mom, you're not up. <laughs> also, before I forget, I don't want to, um, what is it called? Kingdom Kids. There we go. Sorry for that. Um, they are walking in the parade September 12th. And yeah. we, is there a form that they fill out? No? I don't think so. No, they're just whoever is welcome. Join yes, it up and walk them, with them. Them. Them all. Yeah, bring them all. That's kids. That's kids. Yeah. yeah. Dude, are we throwing candy? Yes. Woo! I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> so, but then last but not least, we have actually a testimony walking among us. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful man. Yes. How many know Mark Sutherland? Woo! I love to hear that. So actually, he's here today and he wants to share and thank all of you guys. So now we're going to do Mark Sutherland. I love you, son. I'm you. Well, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it is so good to be here and see all of you. I mostly just want to say thank you. Like, I can't express how powerful the prayers are from everyone. Yeah. And, and yeah. they're working. God is healing me. So. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so you didn't want to. But, <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess, like I did think of this the other day, um, just that I'm, I am learning how to walk. And it's physical, but also spiritually, like learning how to trust in God, and He's changed every plan I had for my life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're just we're just full of joy and peace, and just ready for yeah. you to be here. God, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christ alone song, um, how he is for through the storm. So yes. mm -hmm. we just can't be our circumstances. We have to yeah. rise above them, right. and we can only do that with the Lord. Yep. Amen. 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 <laughs> Those of you that don't know, uh, maybe three months ago, uh, John sent me some pictures saying you need to pray, and the pictures were horrifying. What had happened is Mark was part of a group of motorcyclists, and a girl was texting, and a car in front of her was going to turn left after the motorcycles passed, but because she didn't see them, she hit that car full speed and pushed it in front of Mark, decimated the motorcycle. He probably flew 70 feet. There was a doctor in the group that was surprised he was alive. And then, of course, uh, nobody thought he would ever walk. And if you're on the Facebook, he's, he's got the thing, but he's moving and, you know, it's just got amazing. <laughs> Aren't 
testimony is cool. I mean, when you, I'm just going to give a second. Does somebody have one pop and you can't sit there any longer? you got to share a quickie. But God, oh, God bless you. Yes, Mary. My brother had COVID and on May 29th, he was at with the ventilator. Uh, the end of, no, middle of July, my sister-in-law was planning his funeral. <laughs> and um, today now, he's getting ready to go to his third phase, which is just rehab. He's taking a few steps. He's off the ventilator. He's off the train. <laughs> Doesn't it make you want to say God's good? I mean, oh, God. Yes, brother, real quick. So I'm from uh, Murray. I used to come to this church with a little background of dolls, but just this last Tuesday, the same thing happened. There was a car and motorcycle accident texting. Dawn and Mary Stout, please pray for them. Dawn died on the scene. They went flying. Uh, Dennis, so it's Dennis and Dennis, please pray. Dawn Stout. So, it's okay. That was yes, God, God. keep him the same thing. Yes, yes, amen. All right. Hey, um, uh, we have a couple of retired pastoral couples here. And so the storms, Roy and Ginger, Roy and Ginger Storm. And then, of course, the Carlsons are a part of our body, but they're here today, David and Mary Carlson, have both served God in ministry. Thank you for all that you have done and have meant to be God. And, uh, pastor, yeah, yeah. Now, the whole month of August, we were learning a Bible verse. I happen to have in my pocket a $25 BP gas certificate. If you can come up and say it flawlessly with the address, who wants to try it? <laughs> Normally my family can't win, but if nobody wants to take her on, anybody? Okay, let's try Shiloh. Whatever you drink or eat, or whatever you do, do it in the Christ. Oh crap! <laughs> That's not the Bible. I want you to back up the tape and erase that. Well, you gave it a good try. No, that's not perfect enough. Okay. Yes, Jill, stand up. No, it's got... Hey, listen, you're getting 25 bucks, and it's one verse. Come up and get you. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. First Corinthians 10, 31. Thank you. I've got a quick video to show you in a second, but I do want to share another testimony. Many of you are aware of some or not. Um, early in the summer, because my wife is retired, we just thought, hey, let's get a sort of new mission in life. And uh, we heard about something called release time. And what release time is, it's been in the Wisconsin Constitution forever, but it just hasn't been used. It's basically a way for ch churches to pick up kids, give them a Bible lesson, and take them back. And we have found a very cooperative spirit with our school district. We're working together with them. And we are starting September 21st with 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Every Tuesday and Thursday morning, we'll bring them here. You'll notice a whiteboard that Bill just put up. Bill Shy, thank you for that. And um, the kids will be gathered around that, coming in that door every Tuesday and Thursday morning during school time, during their specials. So we're very excited. Now, uh, one reason I bring it up is because on the greeting table, uh, which Tom and Lynette man so wonderfully, we have this, which is an indicator you would like to sort of adopt one of those children, which means that you would um, pay for the textbook and supplies, which is $20, and pray. So if you want to grab one of those, give us your name. After the kids sign up, we would then give you the first name only. But you would be a prayer partner over that child so they get all that they need to. We have a wonderful curriculum, kind of a non-denominational good Bible curriculum. Even the Catholic Church is inquiring about sending their children here. So we're very excited for this. We would love for 
every school district in the area to do it. Nobody even knew about it, but we're gonna, we had other school districts call saying, could you help us do it there? So we, uh, my wife and I, she is very excited. Stand up and act excited. <laughs> God. Amen. We, it is, but you need to know it's by choice, okay? No student will be leaving the school unless they have their parents' permission. So we, just like, I forget who was saying this morning, um, Dwayne, that it's a mission field. We have a mission field right here in our public schools. Yeah. Yes. God bless our Christian school here. God bless them. They are amazing. But you know what? Not everyone can afford to send their child to a help to the Christian school. We're going to have the kids twice a week. Yes. It is a miracle. Please pray for us. And if you have, I know all of us could probably sponsor one student. Yep. It's yes. just $20, just $20. And um, I pray that this place is packed. Yep. May Woo. We'll go to St. Croix Falls. Yep. Yeah. We want to do it everywhere. It is an open door for Jesus. Yeah. 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 Just seeing God's hand at work is so wonderful. Uh, can we go ahead and show the uh, video, please? this holiday season? Alexa, what's the weather? The sun's raining. Say hello to Christian Alexa, <laughs> believer's alternative to the Amazon Echo. Alexa, <laughs> have Kanye West. How about Matthew West? Now everything you love about the Echo except super Christian. Alexa, text Vanessa, can't wait to see you soon. Kissy face emoji. Is that really guarding her heart? Without <laughs> situational recognition, Christian Alexa is here to encourage. Philippians 4.13, I came to do all things in the presence of Always wanted to be a better Christian? Well, now you can with Christian Alexa. Oh, shh. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Christian Alexa is another program to help you with your individual struggles. Hey, you want some of the drink? That better be a Coke bottle. <laughs> How about Let's Pray? From the makers of Pure Flix and God To comes Christian Alex. Alexa playing Game of Thrones. Are you sure you should be watching that? Give the gift of Christian Alex and have a happy holiday. You mean Merry Christmas? You know, it's just not going to work. You know, let's just listen to some music. Pretty good. Alexa, play a song to set the mood. How about I call your accountability partner? <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about someone who's smarter or was smarter than Alexa, King Solomon. <laughs> Let me set this up. I'd like you to pretend or dream for a moment that a friend came to you and said, you've got to check out this restaurant. There's nothing like it. And you're kind of, you know, skeptical. But you maybe grab your spouse or family and you go to this restaurant. And when you walk in, every detail is perfect. Every detail is perfect. The smells are right, the sounds are right, the service is exceptional. The food, you've never tasted anything quite as good, and it's all affordable. All that comes together, and you're like the most satisfied customer ever, right? Would you return to that? Obviously, you wouldn't. So you would have had what I call a more than satisfying experience, right? What about if a friend said, hey, uh, they, this one car company came out with a new car, there's nothing like it, and you're skeptical, but you go. And you find that this car is beautiful and stylish. Every detail of that car and the leather smells good. Everything is just perfect for you. In fact, there's a little thing that tells you uh, if a cop is up ahead with a speed zone. I mean, everything about this is absolutely perfect. And you would just, you would brag about that. You'd be satisfied with that. Well, there's a lady that had that very same experience in spades called the Queen of Sheba. Uh, Solomon, King Solomon, uh, came after his father David. He reigned around 950-ish uh, BC before the Lord. And he was so 
blessed. Why don't we just leave it at blessed? In every, I don't know what you think about when you think about blessed, but in every single way that it was noised abroad that this there was no king like Solomon. So I'm just going to read out of 1 Kings chapter 10, uh, 1 through 10, if you care to follow along. But it says, when the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, he, she came to test Solomon with hard questions, arriving at Jerusalem with a great caravan with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones. And she came to Solomon and talked with him about all she had on her mind. And when the queen of Sheba saw the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending of his servants in their robes, his cupbearers, the burnt offerings that were made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. Now that word overwhelmed right there, depending on what version of the Bible you have, it means no spirit left in her. No spirit. It's actually the word that gets translated Holy Spirit, but it can mean breath or wind. There was no spirit left in her when she encountered this majestic kingdom of Solomon. So she spoke to the king and said, The report I heard in my country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I didn't believe these things until I came and saw them with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told me. Don't you like being uh, overwhelmingly blessed when we tend to be disappointed with things in life? She was overwhelmingly blessed. How happy are your people? How happy are your officials who stand before you and hear your wisdom? Praise be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. And the verse 10 says she gave was the equivalent of 9,000 pounds of gold. I don't know what that's worth, a few pennies, I would guess. Um, large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the queen of Sheba gave to Solomon. Well, I heard before church that a special message came into our congregation. And I wonder, does anybody have that special message for me? Do you have that, Roy? It was given to you? Yeah, could you come over and read what the special message is? Did that get turned off? No. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Press the bottom. How's that? that better? Yeah. First, before I read this special message, I've never done this before. Come into a church that you've never been there and you have to correct the pastor. <laughs> Father, help me. <laughs> he introduced my wife and I as Ginger and Roy Storm. Now, I like that. Oh, it's sword. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like the sword of the spirit. Okay. Now, the special message. When you're loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. Yeah. Read that one more time. Yeah. When you are loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. Amen. Folks, it will happen. Amen. It will happen. And let your love be shown. Everybody doesn't receive it. Yeah. One last thing. As the uh, Lord dropped in my spirit this morning, as we were praying. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. How we need a move of God's spirit yes. this day. Amen. God bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the children, beside the illusion, once a quarter we do a gospel-based illusion program, are also getting a lesson on that very special message. When you're loved by God, you don't have to be liked by everybody, especially as we're starting school. Your children or grandchildren are going to find that not everybody likes them, and many of us take that deeply personally. And yet in life, our children need to know not everybody's going to like you, and they may not like them particularly because they're a Christian or because some stand they take, which is a good and godly thing. But it's hard. We as parents and grandparents want to walk through that 
And this week is a perfect time, so your child will be bringing home a half sheet with some questions and some thoughts, uh, kind of based on a, a Solomon's life here, about that. I'm encouraging you to uh, have a family devotion time. So let's, and thank you for that correction, Roy. I need it a lot. Really. <laughs> um, so let's review our story and make some application uh, here for us. The Queen of Sheba was the top dignitary of probably Ethiopia. Some people think it was another town in Arabia, but whichever one it was, it was 1,400 miles away. That's long when you drive. But for this gal, think about it. It was months to go see, see Solomon. So guess what she had to do? She had camels, had to be hundreds, to just carry the gold and the spices and stuff, and mules. She had to have cooks and servants and people to put up tents. And she had to have an army around her. You don't travel around with that kind of wealth without an army because there could be bandits along the way. So she really planned to be away probably for a year or more to see King Solomon. That's how good it was in Israel during Solomon's life. You think about it. If this woman who lived in opulence lost her breath when she encountered Solomon's, what he was all about and what God had done in his life was extraordinary. We almost can't think of enough words, fabulous, whatever you want to say. This was incredible what God had done to Solomon. And I want you to think about something because, you see, God loves you. He loves you so much individually that he will reach you the way you need to be. In other words, he will find a way to get to your heart. He's relentless. He's jealous for your heart. He will use a TV program or a track or a friend or even an accident sometime, whatever. But he'll use things speaking to you by the Spirit to get your heart, to get your attention, to get you back on track with him. And so this woman, there was no knowledge of any faith before that. Can I tell you something that's beautiful? After she went to see Solomon, she saw his palace. She saw his home. She saw the temple. Every piece of that was with fine detail. I mean, unspeakable amounts of wealth in all those buildings. The she could find fault nowhere. She couldn't find fault in the servants or in the dignitaries that met with him and served him with anything in the nation. When she went home, she went home with a Jewish faith. And the reason we know that, particularly if she's part of Ethiopia, is for about five to 700 years, Ethiopia embraced a faith very similar to what the Jewish people. So something happened. What I'm saying here, let's make a tag on you and me the same way it took opulence to reach this lady. It's what it took. It wasn't going to take a beggar on the corner. Now, that's right for somebody else. But for this woman, God designed a moment yeah. out of love. That's how much God loves you to design, to send the perfect person, the perfect situation. Because, see, at the end of days, it's not about all the rules. There are rules, obviously. There's a kingdom that cooperates. But at the end of days, when we face our Savior, by the way, if I can just convince everybody that that day is coming. Yes. I mean, maybe not today or tomorrow, but if everybody can get it in their heart, their heart of hearts, someday I'm going to look Jesus in the face. Yes. And to make that good, there's one thing you and I need to do is embrace his love. Yes. Just say yes to the Lord. In fact, you need to do that before you know what it means, because if you knew what that meant, you might not do it. Because coming to faith can have some painful moments. You know, we've all been there that have walked with the Lord a while. But he doesn't want you to worry about that. He wants you to embrace him and trust him with those moments that are painful, right? And he says, I will walk with you. It's all his love. So this woman, all the opulence, you know, you know, I put this picture up here. It's, uh, you know, some concert place in Paris. And you might not cross the street to see it, but that kind of thing is what she encountered. Gold was so abundant. So uh, just one little thing, when, when Solomon had the temple built, he had two angels with a 15 foot wingspan, two of them inside the Holy of Holies touching each other and their wings touched the outer curtain and it was completely gold plated. That's just a kind of, of richness and wealth 
that she encountered. You know, beautifully, she got born. It wasn't the opulence. Now, obviously, it was a beautiful thing. She got faith. She got faith. In fact, there's nothing better than getting faith. I've talked to people re recently that were kind of on their journey, and I, I feel like our job is to help people on their journey. They may not have made the decision, but let's make it easy to make the decision. Let's answer their questions. Let's be available for them. And in my travels, as I found that, sometimes just your word in season to somebody can make all the difference. Understanding where they are, answering their question. And, you know, talk about answering questions. One of the things that took this woman's breath away, I mean, she was speechless, was listening to Solomon himself. She, she might not have known at that point that there are three books in the Bible that are all about Solomon. I don't know if you knew that. Met, he's mentioned in Kings and in Chronicles. But the Proverbs, primarily written by Solomon, and then Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, about his relationship with one of his wives. And so um, this man was not just wise, he was wise beyond understanding. And the reason he was wise is because he had to make a choice one day. Don't you wish every kid could make this choice? God just said, what do you want? What do you want, Solomon? He was in prayer. It was a, a literal visitation. And God said, Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon said, you know what, God? I'm a child. I've got this, this kingdom to run. My father has passed on to me. If you could just give me wisdom to rule it well for you. And I bet God stepped back and went, whoa. How... That's one request I can fill. And so he gave Solomon more wisdom than any other man, any other man, and to bless him, he gave him more wealth and success than any other king. He did that. I want to be careful about this, but you guys that have been in the kingdom of God a while, have given your life to Christ in the past, you know something happens, and don't you try to say no to this. When you start walking with Christ as you process things, you start to achieve success and a form of prosperity. Now, I'm not all into this over, you know, over the top stuff, but the truth is, think about it. What I used to spend my money on, I don't spend it on anymore. It was all about the party and all the, you know, in fact, I don't know if you were like me when I was a kid, it was all about my car, how cool I could look in my car. And so, I mean, how, Obviously, we all go through those phases, but how foolish is that? That could have been really going to my first house, and I'm putting it all in, you know, these things that are given. But you know that when you come to Christ, not only do you quit spending money foolishly, you start investing it correctly. And when you start investing correctly, then blessing comes. Now, one of the correct ways we do the Dave Ramsey course here is to have a budget and to, you know, allocate money, obviously pay your bills, put some aside for retirement yourself, and giving, and giving. You cut the supply of God off when you don't give. And some people don't learn that, but I will tell you, as people that have given for many, many years, we, you know, the abundance has come. It just, it just happens. And so Solomon may or may not learned all those things. He certainly knew God blessed him and loved him. But it seems like over time, if you kind of track someone's life, he kind of let go of his passion for Christ. He let the lukewarmness creep in. I want to talk about that because we're not only talking about the abundance of God's love, which he had, but what we can do to keep the blessings flowing and even on a horizontal context to engage people with the blessings we have and to build true friendships. You know, I'm not too sure we've all... Um, he learned all the skills of friendship and, and Solomon, as wise as he was, he didn't do some things that he should have done. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to talk about a few of those um, right now. Before I do, I just want to read Ephesians 3. I want this to soak into your spirit before we talk about how we can improve. And this is from the Apostle Paul. It's a prayer he prayed. He said, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp, power to grasp a concept. Do you know, um, before I go on, Michael Angelo drew this incredible thing in the Sistine. You all don't know about that. 
You may not know about the fact that there were restorers sent in some time ago, and what had happened, and nobody can even think about it, all the candles that, you know, burned for light and for votives and stuff like that, had put a soot up over the centuries that began to make the beauty, it was stunning, of that color, not shine. It, it wasn't lustrous anymore. And when they went and they got the junk off, guess what they saw? The beauty of the original. And unless we come back to the beauty of the original, we're going to fall like Solomon. It is sad to think, you guys, what I'm going to cover today is just some answers to a guy that needed to be listening to somebody else that can correct him and help him. And don't we all need that? He, he, um, he slowly ebbed away from God in spite of the blessings, in spite of all that he had. 1 Kings 11 and verse 6. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods. Let me explain that a second. Oh, I didn't finish Ephesians 3. Man, I got man. I'm, I'm going to ahead of myself. You can grasp the how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ. To know this love is surpassed knowledge, you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Would God, could, would God desire that for all of our lives? Absolutely. For us to be full of the fullness of God. Okay, Solomon didn't stay full of the fullness of God. It says that as Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and I had, ended up having 700 wives. A guy at his level of uh, worldwide popularity would have married some women purely to build an alliance with other countries. That's just kind of the way it happened. But to please them, he would build something for them to worship their God, and, and uh, which I don't agree with, but he did that in Israel, so there were false idols in Israel, and then his wives enticed him to be involved in that form of worship. So his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord as the heart of David, his father, had been. He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites, so Solomon did evil of the, in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't follow the Lord completely as David, his father, has done. It was so bad. I mean, we're not just talking a little blip on the radar. He had uh, walked away from God so far that by the end of Solomon's reign, it was about 40 years long, God divided the kingdom over. It was directly related to Solomon's sin. And it became 10, there were 12 tribes, 10 tribes were north, the northern kingdom. They never ended up serving God. And then the southern kingdom, they had a few good kings. Finally, the whole thing disbanded, and they were overrun by the Assyrians and Babylonians. So, how can we keep from having that happen to us? Let me interject something right here. From a world perspective, most of us here are fairly wealthy. And so what I'm going to say applies to us, most of us. And that is, wealthy people have to be concerned with what wealth does to them. Okay, now you say, I'm not wealthy, but from time to time, God gives you infusions. And I'm saying God. Remember last week we said be thankful for all things? Mm -hmm. You get an infusion of cash. The first thought in your mind says a lot about your heart. If the first thought in your mind is, Man, now I can get, instead of, wow, I wonder how I can bless. I need to let that settle in. Because we all get infusions. It may be a stimulus check. It may be, a, uh, may be an inheritance. Or maybe you get some kind of extra bonus bump at the end of the year. You can do with that whatever you want. What I'm saying is, we have to watch what wealth does to our heart. Because this guy Solomon, he ruined his life with his wealth. I know he got into a uh, kind of an altercation with a guy named Hiram. You can look this up. He had been supplying wood primarily and some gold to uh, Solomon. And when it came payday, uh, so this guy lived north of Israel. Solomon cut 20 cities out of reaching out to give it to him. And the guy didn't like it. And Solomon's going like, well, hey, that's what you get. I mean, it, it, you, you become uncaring after a while. So I can be jeopardized when I don't handle my wealth well. 
And Paul said this to Timothy about generosity. And Timothy's a pastor. He says, command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. But put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. They may take hold of the life that is truly life. That's something to all of us. You know, at some point, even if you haven't been the receiver of an infusion of cash, let's just say it the way it is, you will be. I suggest you prepare. That you already say, uh, this is not going to get all spoiled and wasted on me. If we're thankful for everything and God gave it to you, which he did, who gave you the breath to work that job or whatever, yeah. Yeah. then he should be consulted as to what that is for. Isn't that a cool picture? It's going to help me get into my second point here, and it's about Selfie America. <laughs> there to date have been probably around, it was 259, but close to 300 people that died doing that. Yeah, doing that very kind of thing. They'll get up on a mountaintop or do something odd, get a selfie stick out. I'm interested that this gal has a cell phone in one, she's a double selfie person, cell phone in one hand and one up on the selfie stick. Now, I, she didn't die, I mean, I'm just trying to express something here. America, we are eaten up with ourselves. We are all about us. And the Bible presents an exact opposite. The Bible puts us on mission to bless others. How can I be a blessing to somebody else? What can I do in this world to make a difference? We're not counting the sacrifice. That's a small thing. Our Savior sacrificed for us more than we could ever sacrifice. We're just saying, Lord, if you would bless with this, I so want to do something to make a difference in the world. I want to give. Selfie surrender is about learning. It's, oops, there's nothing wrong with taking a picture of yourself with other people. That's not my point. My point is that's just a simple indicator of a problem that even Solomon had. Now, if you've ever read the book of Ecclesiastes, you got a shock because it's kind of depressing. Here is a man, and he, he admits it. He admits it. He gave himself everything. He was off mission. He was not, you don't, you don't hear about Solomon blessing the world. By the way, his great, 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 great granddad, Abraham, was given a call that is still ours. God said to Abraham, I have blessed you, and he did, so that you could what? Spend it on yourself. So that you could be a blessing. I have blessed you so that you could be a blessing. Here's what, here's what Solomon said about himself in Ecclesiastes. I acquired men servants and maid servants, and servants were born in my house. I own more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I accumulated for myself silver and gold, and the treasure of kings and provinces. I gathered to myself male and female singers, and the delights of the sons of men, many concubines. He had 700 wives and 300. How could you even remember the names? <laughs> Think about Christmas. <laughs> And so he says this about himself. I became great and surpassed all in Jerusalem who had preceded me, every other previous king. My wisdom remained with me. Anything my eyes desired, I did not deny myself. What did Jesus say? He says, unless you bear your cross daily, deny yourself. You can't. And I want to ask some Americans, what have you ever denied yourself? You cannot follow me. I became great and surpassed everyone who had preceded me. Anything my eyes desired, I didn't deny myself. I refused my heart no pleasure. You could just dwell on everything that this man tried because his heart was getting emptier and emptier. And you keep trying to fill that with pleasures and experiences and things. For my heart took delight in all my work, and this was the reward for all my labors. Do you sense the entitlement there? I deserve it. 
Yet, when I considered all the works that my hands had accomplished and what I had toiled to achieve, I found everything to be futile, a pursuit of the wind. There was nothing to be gained under the sun. So here's a man that had more than all of us put together and found out it didn't do for him what he thought. You know, people that knew Solomon, I'm suspecting if he had friends, they were there for his money. And if they stuck with him, they got tired of hearing him talk about himself. He was all about himself. And he learned that's a dead end street. Thankfully, at the end of Ecclesiastes, he said, this is the end for all mankind to serve God and keep his commandments. He, he knew that the life he had lived um, didn't bode well for him. Finally, I alluded to this earlier. Solomon refused to join the costly crowd. It's something that's before us today. When you see a man who has experienced the voice of God twice like he had, had all the promises of eternal, uh, having his family be eternal kings, like it was said to David, if your son will serve me, you'll always have somebody on the throne. He had that promise, was blessed in every way beyond understanding. How could he have the kingdom ripped away from him? And here's how it happened, one step at a time, just like you and just like me. And when we can't see it, the best friend in the world is one that points it out. And however they say it, they may take us out for coffee, it might be a phone call, it could be a text. I like a more personal version, but say, you know what, I've been noticing this in your life. What's going on? And you know, with Solomon, it's pretty clear. He began to amass things that were forbidden in the book of Deuteronomy. He would have known this. It, it forbid uh, kings to get too wealthy. It forbid kings to have all these horses and chariots and depend on that instead of God. They were forbidden to have foreign wives. And for sure, the kings were forbidden from having false idols in the community. And so why didn't somebody talk to him? Well, I, I imagine they were afraid to. But partially it's because he hadn't welcomed it. You know, you got to work hard to get people to be honest with you. Because really, we, right? Everybody around us, we, we don't want to hurt feelings. We want to keep our relationships, even in marriage, you know? So, but, uh, well, maybe not in marriage. Anyway. <laughs> I hear it pretty quickly. But, um, uh, So my question is, why didn't someone talk with Solomon about his ways? I have to answer, at least in this way, he never invited it. We'd be so wise to invite it. Let me, we're gonna have communion today. Um, let me invite you to that, uh, to communion. It's a wonderful opportunity to connect with your Savior, maybe with some other people, a small group. But I want you to take communion in the, lavished in the love of God. When you think about Solomon's riches, it isn't the riches that we're supposed to focus on. It was God's love to Solomon, partially to reach a queen of another country. Hello? Yeah. Let's not get all focused on the gold and the silver and the thrills. It was God's love. And you know, if anyone were to look at your life, we can see a hundred ways God has blessed you and loved you. And that's called the lavishing. You know, when you lavish someone, it's like an overabundance. Ephesians 3 says, God has lavished his love on us. And all he wants us to do is respond to him with an open heart. Let's pray. Lord God, as we pray, um, we think about Solomon who was so abundantly blessed. Uh, kind of wish in my heart he had walked with you, but we learn from his failures that uh, we can't let the things of this world get in our way. Um, we want to be a generous people. We want to be a kind and friendly people. We want to be a people on mission for God. Father, as we, our heads are bowed, we want to make a fresh commitment to your love in our life. And maybe you've never done that in a personal way. Say, Jesus, come into my heart, wash away my sins. I want to be your child. He'll do that for you. He, he just loves you. He's always loved you. Love you so much. So that final day that I mentioned is a good one. When you look in his eyes, you will see all the love and acceptance that you've been experiencing here on earth. I would, I would say don't hesitate, friend. Just say yes to the love of God. It'll come uniquely to you. You'll see it in a hundred, maybe a hundred thousand different ways throughout your life. And all you have to do is have a heart open to it. The Lord God, your Savior, wants to bless you today. Fathers, we have communion. We say, Lord, 
cause our faith to be strengthened with the bread and with the juice. A true celebration of what our Savior did on the cross to bring us into relationship with you. We pray in Jesus' name. You're welcome to come up as, as you desire. I would say, once you're done with communion, if you're going to talk, because others will be having communion, just go outside and have some coffee and treats. And thank you for being here today. It's been wonderful to be together. Lord, I come, I confess.